the Icons of Real Estate podcast. Are you ready to learn the proven money-making secrets from eXp's top producing icon agents? If you are an ambitious eXp agent ready to skyrocket your business, this podcast is for you. Tune in every week with your host, Tomasz Fonseca, and find out how to implement proven strategies to 10 times your eXp business from $3 million to $30 million in just 12 months. Brought to you by the Masters in Real Estate Marketing, Arter SEO. Hello, guys, and welcome to another episode of Icons of Real Estate podcast. With us today, we have Dayton Schrader. He's a licensed agent since 1982 and has been building a referral-based business ever since. As team leader of the Schrader Group, powered by eXp Realty, Dayton has helped 3,000 families buy or sell a home in San Antonio. Dayton is also a real estate coach at Core Training, an elite coaching and training company for lenders and realtors. Welcome to the show, Dayton. Well, thank you very much, uh, Tomas. I appreciate the invitation. Oh, yes. I appreciate you coming. <laughs> so let's start with your uh, real estate journey, Dayton. Wow. So I had uh, I grew up here in San Antonio. I went to uh, Texas A&M University in College Station. I, uh, I flunked out of college because I never cracked a book in high school. So after about 18 months, I came home with my tail between my legs. And that was probably one of the lowest points of my life. And I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I went and talked to my high school golf coach. And he said, oh, go visit with my wife. She runs a real estate office. So I said, OK, fine, I'll go visit with Yvonne. And, and Yvonne said, oh, Dayton, you'll love real estate. And I said, really? And she goes, oh, yeah, you know, you'll be fine. Sign here. So that was January of 1982. And I've been at it ever since. And the first house I sold was Super Bowl Sunday, 1982. Nobody else wanted to work that day. I was I was low man. So uh, we sat on site because I didn't have my license yet. I was working for the builder that the, the, the brokerage represented. And I sat on site and I read books and I practice on blank contracts. Of course, there's no internet back then or anything like that. So everything, no computers. So you did everything by hand. And so I calculated payments and I walked through the house and, and role played with buyers, imaginary buyers, and, and just kept practicing. And people were nice to me when I was a nobody. And so I, and I hung in there for the longest time because I had nowhere else to go. And then things started picking up for me over over the years, but it was, it was brutal. The first six or eight years was really tough. Yeah, I believe it, but it's, it's the important part is that you stick with it and, uh, and, and you made it through. Yeah, we were very fortunate and we hung in there. Things started picking up in San Antonio. We had a huge company relocate from Corpus Christi, uh, HEB grocery store in the, in the late eighties. And then in the early nineties, Southwestern Bell came to San Antonio from St. Louis and along with that, our, our town just exploded at that point. And we were on a great trajectory. Uh, when Southwestern Bell came here, they, they brought AT&T and Pac Bell and Bell South and all those other companies and all the people and the influence and corporate influence that they had. And so that was a huge run for San Antonio up until 9-11. And then after 9-11, we pulled back a little bit. And then we had a really great run again until the meltdown of 08 and 09. And we survived on short sales and REO deals and things like that. And then things started picking up again. We've been on a pretty good run uh, up until the pandemic here the last year. And in, in 21, 20 was when our, our second best year ever. And so we had a lot of momentum. We had a phenomenal uh, 2020. 2021, we're starting to feel the effects of the supply chain issues. Builders can't finish the houses. And so we've got a big pipeline. But we didn't close as many transactions this year as I would have liked. Yeah. And it seems that, yeah, uh, back in the day, those uh, mi migration uh, waves, like a, a big company coming, coming to, your, to your county, like it's, it's a very important factor for, so you can bring people that want to buy houses. But as for now, do, do you feel any, anything up in the future or in the, in the, close, in the close past that influenced uh, more migration to San Antonio? Well, I think we'll get some. We're never going to be Dallas. Dallas and Plano have made able to bring in a lot of big major corporate headquarters. Houston obviously has had their share. Austin's doing a great job bringing Apple and Tesla and Facebook mm -hmm. and, and that footprint. But they always had the advantage of uh, they always had Texas Instruments and they had Motorola and they had Dell computers. 
And so that's pretty good synergy there. San Antonio, we were a military town and a hospitality town for the longest time. And then in a service-based economy, because we all just took care of each other. And, but then uh, our city council and our government uh, worked really, really hard to bring Toyota to San Antonio and to bring and, and to bring Southwestern Bell to San Antonio. So those were a couple of big pops. Since then, we've landed some other smaller deals. Uh, nothing, nothing monster, but a lot of little deals. And then again, just a really good a service-based economy, a very um, uh, affordable place to live for the most part. Uh, very uh, spread out workforce. And so we've doubled as a city, we've doubled in the last 30 years. We'll double again in population in the next 30 years. So we're on a pretty good growth curve right now. Nice. But that, that, mm. that's something that I guess you don't have much of influence on, right? If you're not uh, going for a city council or something. So let's let's talk about on what you can, <laughs> what you can have an influence. And the, the Schrader Group, uh, it has been running for some years, right? And uh, after... 36 year with, with Remax, you decided to make a move to EXP Realty. And uh, how was the process of updating to a new broker style, new technology evolution like EXP Realty? That, that was a huge deal for us. We had been, I, Remax had raised me from a pup. And so I joined Remax in May of 1982 and was with them for over 37 years. So I did probably just about everything I could with Remax. I was a broker owner at one point. Uh, we won all the plaques. We were, we made all the, the levels, the, uh, all the way up to over a million dollars in fees a year. And then I even got the circle of legends deal, which is $20 million over 20 years. And there aren't that many of those out there. Really, really proud of that accomplishment. And it was a great run. And I was at a point where I thought I was going to end up just doing 40 years with Remax and kind of ride off into the sunset. And a, a buddy of mine who I've been friends with for many, many years, also a big hitter with Remax, was retiring. He'd done very well in Houston. And he was retiring. His son was taking over his practice. And his son didn't have all the emotional baggage that we did uh, with respect to Remax. And so he came in and took a look at it a lot more objectively and said, you know what? I think I got a better model. And they made the move to EXP and they migrated their team. And they were, at the time, a uh, 175, 200 million dollar team in Houston because they were always number one, two, three in the state, and I was always kind of four, five, six in the state. So we'd always see each other at the conventions. I was always standing in line behind them, uh, <laughs> but we got to be really good friends over time. And they're in the Houston market. We were in San Antonio, so any competition, it was just friendly, uh, very supportive of one another. And so they made the move, and I thought, wow, I really got to look at this again. And I drug my feet for about six months. And then we made the move. And so we moved over May 1st of 2019. I May 1st, pardon me, March 1st of 2019. And it's just been phenomenal. We migrated. I had my staff of 15 plus a couple of agents. So we moved the whole team, all of our listing inventory, two MLSs, the whole thing. And no breakage, no spillage. We didn't lose anybody. We didn't lose any momentum. Nice. Uh, uh, we, I was very much uh, a, a believer in the brand. And I still, I mean, it's a great brand, no doubt about it. However, the relationships were mine. They were not with <laughs> Remax. They were with me. And so I was able to take those relationships with me and, and preserve and protect them. And we've worked really, really hard to keep that going. So it's been a phenomenal move. The, operationally, it's a lot less friction. The, uh, the attraction part is, is very appealing. The stock has been phenomenal. I mean, that's just an unbelievable gift to be able to buy stock every month and then get a kicker on top of that and then watch it grow the way it has. And so that was just a, just a gift from God uh, for myself and my family. And it was huge, huge blessing. Nice. I can, I can see that you're happy with your decision. <laughs> And uh, and yeah and so did the Shredder Group changed uh, in any way? Because of course I, I was I was asking like uh, of course we all we all know the benefits of joining, but as as like uh, quite a, a old group that you had like thirty six years of experience, uh, of course something had to change, right? Like because either you you focus on agent attraction or like you have uh, another process, another database to use. So my, my question was like, how was uh, the adapting to, um, to the new brokerage? 
We, well, my day job is still listing and selling houses. I have no illusions about that. And, and so I go on a lot of listing appointments. I take a few buyers, but I go on a lot of listing appointments. So I'm, and, and I don't buy leads. I'm not a Zillow boomtown tiger lead guy. Mm -hmm. All of our leads are generated through our database and our referral partners. We do get sign calls and internet hits and open house hits on our inventory, but I don't spend any money. Uh, I, no radio, no TV, no print media at all. It's strictly uh, taking care of our database, cultivating relationships. We do a lot of work for builders here in San Antonio. And then I do a lot of work for what I, what I refer to as non-industry professionals, CPAs, financial planners, attorneys. We do some expert testimony. So we built a pretty good business uh, on, on those referral partners as well. So I've got the builders that I rely on that, that feed us really well, plus the database that we've curated over the years, uh, a couple of really good alumni associations I'm proud of, and, uh, and then our non-industry professionals. Nice. And so that's kind of how we, that, so I have not gone all in on it. There's some guys that are way, way better in me than, than me at agent attraction. Uh, and, and, and good for them. They've done a phenomenal job. Some guys are just taking breathtaking money. Uh, which is, um, I'm very happy for them. That's never been my thing. I've never been a great recruiter. When I was a broker owner, I was not a great recruiter. I just like selling. And I make more as an agent listing and selling houses than most broker owners I know. And, and so, and it's been a great blessing for us and our, our family and our team and everybody else. Nice. Uh, but I guess the, even the, the attraction bit, it, it doesn't only need uh, to be coming from you, right? It can come from any uh, of, your, of your team. So maybe they, they will choose to go on that path. Well, absolutely. And so we have had some success. We're not, we're not, not doing anything, but which has not been our major focus. Mm -hmm. But one of the ladies who works for me had worked for a brokerage up in Northern Virginia. She joined our team when she relocated to San Antonio she reached back to that brokerage and they're coming on board with us. Nice. And so that's three or four levels down, but I'm helping her uh, uh, bring this group in. And that'll be a really nice pop for her and for the rest of us as, as well as that goes. I have another young lady working for me from Puerto Rico and, and her brother uh, was a Remax agent in Houston. He split time between Houston. Where he's joined EXP underneath us. And so he's back recruiting heavily in Puerto Rico right now. So we're, we're, we're hitting little bitty veins. We haven't hit an artery yet, like some of these guys have, but we're hitting um, little bitty veins here and there. And eventually it'll grow. I'm, I, I'm, exactly. I can play the long game. So it's exponential. I'm okay it's exponential. So it's okay. Yes. <laughs> and in, uh, so in 1995, you, you made that commitment to work by referral mm. only. And, uh, but my, my question is, what was the breakaway for you to, Uh, to choose uh, to choose that path. Well, I've I've always been a seminar junkie. I was a Tommy Hopkins guy and a Zig Ziglar guy and a big reader. And I listened to tapes in my car and I role play and talk to myself back before you had cellular and hands free and all that kind of stuff. I was always working on my scripts and dialogues and overcoming objections. And I got introduced to Joe Stump, who started by referral only. And he was a phenomenal coach and speaker. And it, that made all the sense in the world to me, a, a referral based business, pouring into your clients, differentiating yourself from others in the industry. And so I went to that very first event back in uh, August of 1995 up in Dallas. And I came home and I took my home number off my business card and I got rid of my pager and I quit taking phone duty. And I've been really well on phone duty. I was pretty good at handling that. And, 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 poured into my database. I got a top producer. I was one of the one of the only people in the office had my own IBM XT computer. Anybody's old enough to remember those. <clears throat> and I really started working my database and it made sense. And so all the scripts and the dialogues and everything else contributed to that. And the systems and the processes were phenomenal. And I started really started putting up some good numbers. We were in that 10, 12, 15 million dollar range. And then one day I got a tape from, from by referral only, and it was a guy named Rick Ruby. And he was a lender, but he was also a speaker and coach for by referral only. And he did a whole thing on realtors and realtors were broke and realtors don't pay their taxes and realtors are maxed out on their credit cards and realtors don't go home when they say they're going to go home. And I thought, holy smokes, this guy's been reading my diary. 
I had been through all that. I wasn't broke anymore, but I'd been there. And I'd had certified letters in the mail and I'd been behind to the IRS and I wouldn't wish that on anybody. And I thought, that's, this guy's speaking to me. And so I drove to, I took a buddy of mine and we drove to Houston where I knew he'd be speaking. And he came off stage and I said, hey, Rick, I listened to your tape. I don't know how many times you're talking to me. I said, what, I, I, I'm in, what do I need to do? And he said, well, I'm getting ready to leave this company. I'm going to start my own company. Are you interested? And I said, absolutely. Where do I sign? And I got involved in that. Uh, and that was 20, 21 years ago. I went to the very first event that the core hosted, it was called Summit uh, in Scottsdale, Arizona, and got involved in that coaching process. Uh, a whole lot more structure. I was past the scripts and, and dialogue part of my career. I needed a boss. I needed accountability. I needed a structure. And so he had me doing a PL every month and a personal budget every month and tracking every single lead that came to the door. And that, that accountability uh, and the belief that we could build a team and leverage the relationships we had made all the difference in the world. So I went from 10, 12, 15 million to now we do about 150 million. We do somewhere between five and 600 sides a year. And it's still referral based. It's still of our transactions, 88% of the ones we close are referred to us by somebody. And like I said, the rest are sign calls, internet hits, things like that. But we're really dialed in on a referral based business. And so that's kind of been the trend. That's now it's been a 20 year journey with the core and a 40 year journey in a career. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a slow plotter. And so there's a lot of people that can do it a lot faster and, and, and get that momentum faster. It took me a while, but uh, we finally got something going pretty decent right now. I'm really pleased with it. But coaching made the difference. I mean, the coaching, the accountability, being influenced by other people that were really good producers that I respected uh, made a huge difference. I, I got that from Remax and the brokerages I was with in San Antonio. There were some really great people that I admired and modeled my business after, people I really respected. And then the core just introduced me to a whole nother level of of that group. And so it's just been a ball. We've had a great time. Yeah. And 80, 88% is, is a big number and you, and you can't, you can't, you can't get away from that. And referral leads are indeed gold. Um, but what I wanted to ask you, because uh, referrals can be a bit tricky to scale, um, especially for, for someone that is just starting right now and leaving the wheel of your leads to uh, referral based only can sometimes lead you to, to a, to a dead end kind of, uh, so like, what is your advice on, on how to scale your referrals? It, it takes time and it takes years. I've been at this for a long time. And so for someone new though, obviously they've got to work on a database, but it's going to take years to cultivate a database. And even if you put together a really great database, they still know a bunch of other realtors. <clears throat> They're not going to move that often. It takes a little while to churn that database. But VIPs and referral partners are the ones that can send you two or three transactions a year. And if you can identify those people, I have a conversation with them about being the go-to person in that relationship and that they're going to refer you consistently the way you want to be referred. Uh, that takes practice and that takes time. But if you can establish yourself well in that arena, you can close the gap a lot faster. Uh, and so, for, for example, I had I have to do some homework for my coach uh, in our coaching because I'm coached as a, as a student. I'm coached by the core and I'm still held to a very high standard. And then I turn around and coach other realtors uh, across mm -hmm. the country. But I had to do I had to basically do a list of everybody that we closed a referral with this year. And and I, I can I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I'm going to say it was 120 different people sent us over 300 transactions. Nice. So a lot of people that are listening to this might have somebody that's really a great person, a great go-to that sends them two or three deals a year. And if you've got that person, then you can get two or three of those people. The only difference is I've got 120 of those people that send me two or three deals a year. And so that's just been huge, plus my database, plus some other things. But um, but those referral partners, and the leverage that comes with that, it, it's that's where the money is. Yeah, and those referral partners that, that was the one you were talking about the the, the attorneys and, and the and the builders is that, is that the ones? I'm sorry. The the referral partners. What do, what do you mean by referral partners? Uh, oh, so people that would that, that aren't buying or selling themselves as a principal, 
mm-hmm. but they're introducing me to somebody else. If a CPA or an attorney or a financial planner puts their arm around you and says, hey, Tomas is my guy. He's going to take great care of you. I trust him implicitly. Don't argue with him. Do whatever he says. You're going to close a very high percentage of those deals. You're still not going to close all of them, but you're going to close a much, much higher percentage of those than any other source. And so working with influential people that are credible, that have the the wherewithal and the resources to refer and the willingness. There's a lot of people say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll give out your card. No problem. But when you pin them down, they're they're not committed to your success. You either haven't earned it or that's just not how they're wired. And so it takes a little while to to read between the lines, to say, are we really are we really going to do this or if we're not? That's OK. I'll find somebody else. But those are hard grown up conversations to have. It takes time and patience and practice uh, and a lot of role playing to get pretty good at that. And but then you get to where you can identify those people faster uh, discard the ones that don't want to play the game and really pour into the ones that do and earn those referrals. Cause you definitely have to earn them. They're not going to be given to you. You've got to earn them and you got to earn, uh, continue to earn them over and over again. Yeah. And in terms of, of the referral partners, like the, like, as you were saying, like, of course it can be, uh, very important to have them in order to, to scale your referrals because it's active, active leads coming in. Uh, what I want to ask is like, how was your, first approach to them like did you already knew them personally before or did you actually um outreach to them with this intent well a, a combination of things so I've, i've had this kind of forest gump career i'm at right place right time people were nice to me i did pursue a lot of relationships so my coach with the core i pursued that relationship a board of directors that I sit on, I pursued that relationship. So I, I, I'm not afraid to pick up the phone and call somebody if there's somebody I want to meet. We started out with the referral partners. That was, I was a combination of things. One was a great introduction <clears throat> from a colleague who said, these guys need some help. I think you'd be useful to them. And then because we, we were able to execute and get them done, then those people kind of spidered out into other builders and other companies And so I've got this whole uh, tree, if you will, of I met one person, they introduced me to two others who introduced me to three others each, who introduced me to two others, who introduced me to one other. And, and so I've been able to build this, um, this great uh, referral network that way. And we lose them. We chainsaw deals. We screw up. We don't deliver. And so I lose a relationship and I've got to fight to get it back. Mm-hmm. There are other instances where new management new boyfriend, new girlfriend, new boss, and we get cut out and we got to work to fight to get those back. So there's no guarantees, no contracts with anybody. You're only as good as your last deal. But we've been able to keep and maintain those relationships, grow them uh, uh, by being super intentional about that. Nice. But it takes time. It absolutely, it's like anything else. It is a, it is a farm, uh, and, but it's not a geographic farm and it takes time. And you got to, you got to deliver. Yeah. It takes time, but, but it's worth it again. Like it's a good, a good investment. Oh my goodness. It's, it's a game changer. It, I mean, economically, it depends on where you want to be financially. I mean, most realtors make 30 or 40 grand a year and that's just the industry. And, but if you really want to make real money, six figures or more, you've got to have the discipline. You got to have structure. You've got to have a coach or a boss, I believe to push you and you got to have a place to go for answers that you may or may not be able to get from your broker or your friendly competitor. Sure. Not going to help you out. And, and so having that, that, um, and, and it's available through EXP it's available through a lot of the brokerages too. I mean, there's, there's help out there. <clears throat> there's coaching out there, but you've got to make that decision. That's where you want to be. And you got to be willing to put in the work. And, and then, that's, and- that's where most people just don't want to do it. Yeah, <laughs> if, if, if they don't want to work, they're, they're not going to get the benefits as well. <laughs> and they don't mind. They don't want to look for work. That's the hard. They, 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 they don't mind going on a listing appointment or they don't mind taking a buyer around, but they don't want to go look for that buyer. Prospecting lead generation is where the money is. Lead generation, lead conversion. Anybody can be an overpaid Uber driver and show houses. And anybody can stick a sign in the ground and let all the other agents bring you a deal. That's not hard. The hard part is doing that six, eight, 10, 12, 15, 30 times a month, every month. That's 
that's where the heavy lifting is. And most people just either they don't think that big. I certainly didn't until I got introduced to some other bigger thinkers. Uh, but most people don't think that big or they're not willing to put in the work because it is you got to really grind for years to do that. <clears throat> I, I tell you, I just finished reading a book called Winning by Tim Grover. Phenomenal book. And he talks about the bullseye. And the bullseye, the outer ring of the bullseye is talent. And everybody has talent. There's always somebody bigger, faster, taller than you, smarter than you. But everybody's got talent. And then the next thing is, is intellect, smart. you got to know your industry or your business. People are smart about what they do. But the next one is desire, the willingness. And everybody wants to win until it gets hard. But the bullseye, he identifies as resilience. And that is, can you get back up when you get knocked down? We've all got talent. We're all kind of smart about what we do. We know how to underwrite or process a file. We can go on a listing appointment. We've got that part of it. We kind of want to be wealthy or rich or at least have some success financially and take care of our families. But that resilience, that's the way you, when you get knocked down, when you get beat out of a listing, when your buyer goes and buys a house over the weekend without calling you and you got cut out of that deal, or uh, somebody else gets that expired listing and gets the $20,000 price reduction and they get paid and you worked on it for six months <clears throat> to be able to keep fighting your way back, lose an account, lose a builder, lose a referral partner and fight back. The resilience is where the, where winning really comes from and hanging in there through the really tough times. Yeah. So it sounds, sounds like a great book. <laughs> it's a yeah. great book. He's, he was, um, he was Michael Jordan's personal trainer. Oh, wow. And then he was Kobe Bryant's personal trainer, among others. Yeah. And, and it's just a, a, a great, I loved it. I've loved it. I've read it page to page. Uh, he's written a couple. He also re wrote a Relentless. Mm -hmm. uh, I've not read that yet. I gave, already gave away a couple of copies. I've probably got 10 copies sitting in my office that I give away. <clears throat> but it was a phenomenal book. Nice. There's a so, lot more to it than just that, that bullseye. But that was a big nugget from that book for me. Yeah, you'll be able to sell more houses and uh, shoot more hoops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So in, in, in your coaching uh, at the core training, and I just want to um, understand this, uh, what is the genius that you try to, to transmit to your, to your trainees? Is it uh, similar to what, what we spoke about here today? Or do you have any other specific subject you talk about? I'm, well, I just want to tell people it is it's a it, I think it's a very noble profession. I love what I do. I didn't dream of being a realtor growing up. I had no idea. I grew up in my grandparents' house. They never moved. So I had no idea what that looked like. But as I got into the business and came to appreciate uh, what an interesting uh, business it is, uh, I've, I've loved it. And I can't imagine doing anything else. We've been really fortunate. We're, I'm very fortunate. I live in a great city with a great economy. So I've got that going for me. I've lived here all my life. So I've got that going for me. Uh, and I've had, inf I've been influenced by some really special people that poured into me and believed in me and supported me over the years. And so uh, we've been very fortunate. I've got a, a, been married for 33 years. I'm very spoiled. I don't, I don't clean my pool or cut my grass. I don't go to the grocery store, uh, but I do sell houses. That's the one thing I'm pretty decent at. And, and then I enjoy the coaching. That's been a fun uh, side hustle for me. Uh, I've got some great friends in that coaching program. It's changed my life and it's been a huge, uh, a huge gift to be able to turn around and give back to other people and to participate in it. And so getting, getting some form of coaching, making it, I guess the number one thing is making the decision. What do you really want? What's your number one? What do you want and why? And then, and then making that happen. And there's plenty of ways to do it. Uh, you just got to plow through it and make it happen. Yeah, that's it. Making it happen. I like that. And uh, so we are approaching uh, the end of the year. Uh, Dayton, um, how did the numbers look for you this year? They're down from last year. I'm, I'm not, I, I thought I, the year we're having right now, I thought is what we're going to have last year through COVID. Last year, we had a phenomenal year. We had tremendous momentum, a lot of pent up demand. We were deemed essential in our state. So the construction industry kept going, uh, the sales industry kept going, and we sold a lot of houses last year. This year, the supply chain caught up with us. And so the builders, a lot of the builders cut back on commissions. 
and some builders just quit paying commissions. Mm-hmm. So that hurt. Uh, and, and then a lot of builders either, they didn't need us because they could sell houses so fast. They didn't really need any help or they couldn't get them built fast enough. They can't close. So I was just looking right now. I've got a hundred at the end of this year, I'll have 160 transactions in escrow for next year that, and I would, I would say probably 50 of those should have closed in the, in the fourth quarter of this year, but for whatever reason, garage doors, dishwashers, appliances, whatever, Mm -hmm. copper, you name it, they couldn't get those houses finished. So all those are going to roll into the first quarter of next year and beyond. And so this year we're going to end up just north of 500 sides and we'll do, that'll be, uh, hang on one second. That'll be 140 million. We won't get to 150. We'll do 135 to 140, I think. I had a couple of bigger deals, a couple of nice ones, but uh, nothing super special. I'm not a luxury guy. Mm-hmm. It was 25 years before I sold a house over a million dollars. And now I sell one a year. That's not our market in San Antonio. We're bread and butter. Two fifty to four hundred thousand dollar range all day long, um, but we're going to end up with like around five hundred sides, one hundred forty million, Los Amenos, and um, still a good year, but not an oh my god white hot, which is what I like. Yeah, and let's hope that two thousand and twenty two is a is a very hot hot year. <laughs> yes, and uh, and what are uh, so I was of course you want to have a hot year in two thousand and twenty two, but any other goals that you want to accomplish? Well, I want to help my team. I, I, I'm, again, very fortunate. And so we're in a good position where I can help my other people, especially my younger ones. One of the advantages of EXP, I believe, is I can help some of my younger people start building their downline. And if they can all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, but over time, a thousand or two thousand or three thousand dollars a month, that's a game changer for a lot of people. That's a mortgage payment or college money for their mm-hmm. kids. And that would go on for a long, long time. So I want to take care of them and help them build out as much as they can to the extent they're willing to put in some effort. I want to help them there. Um, I've got all the plaques I need. I mean, I've, uh, that was the thing with Remax and a lot of other deals. I'm, I'm, I'm good on plaques right now. Uh, now it's a matter of taking care of my people, taking care, making sure that we take really good care of our clients and our referral partners. But pouring into my people is the number one thing for me right now. We're going to look at later on this week, we'll do kind of a download of this year. What do we do well? What do we do poorly? Mm-hmm. What are we going to abandon? Uh, what are we going to go double down on or, uh, and, and go all in on other things and spend some time really uh, fighting basically over the budget and what we're willing to spend money on and what we're going to walk away from to, to kind of plot out next year. But I think, I think next year will be a good year. I think the first half of the year is going to be a little sluggish kind of like we are right now. And I think things start picking up. We kind of get caught back up <clears throat> with our supply chain issues and things like that. I think rates will stay fairly low. It might tick up a little bit, but not dramatically. And, and we're, we're unfortunately not through this COVID as much as everybody wants to be over it. We're not through it yet. So um, there's still going to be a reckoning on that as well. Next year's an election year. So nobody wants to ruffle too many feathers next year. So I, I think it'll be a good year. I think it's going to be very competitive. I think there'll be plenty of opportunity for people that want to get them to go to work. Yeah, nice. And uh, and uh, now uh, coming into the to the uh, last set of questions, Dayton is, is a question that we ask every guest: is in what areas do you feel you need to improve, and what are you doing about it? Oh, uh, my leadership skills. I'm I'm hard. I'm I'm not. I'm a nice boss. I'm not a great leader. Mm-hmm. And right. so I've got to work on, on that. And that's been a lifelong endeavor. I mean, it's why you get a degree in management or degree in human resource. That's not my gift. Uh, I finally surrounded myself with better, smarter people. So they make me look way better than I am. So <laughs> that helps a lot, but that's, I've got to work on that. And um, uh, I think our culture here is good in the office. I think we take good care of each other. And, and so I think we're, we all, we can always get better there, but I think we're in good shape there. I need to work on my leadership skills and then I need to just take a little bit better care of my people and make sure that I'm helping them get where they want to be. Those are our, those are our big things right now. Nice. And, uh, and how can our audience uh, reach you, Dayton? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm really easy to find. It's, it's my name, Google my name, and it shows up pretty quick. 
And my email is uh, Dayton at the Schrader group.com. So, uh, but if you put in Dayton Schrader, you'll find me uh, most of the time. And I'm in San Antonio, Texas. Um, uh, happy to visit with anybody. I'm more than happy to talk to you about the core and the coaching program. Uh, it's a phenomenal deal. Uh, we've got several levels of coaching available. And so that's a great place to start. If there's something else I can help you with, please don't hesitate. If there's a referral for San Antonio, we'd really appreciate that opportunity, buyers or sellers. More than happy to pay a referral fee and take great care of your clients. So anything I can do for you in those regards, please let me know. Um, uh, I appreciate it. Tomas, I appreciate the platform and the opportunities. <laughs> it's really great thing that you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it's going to go great. And uh, if if our audience has reached this far of the episode, I think they they really liked it as well. And uh, and yeah, hopefully, hopefully uh, you'll get something out of it uh, as well. And who knows if you get a referral from this. Well, I already, uh, already got let me know. with you for an hour is already a good thing. So I'm already ahead for the day. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's a good way to start today. Good way to start today. <laughs> and and yeah, thank, uh, thanks, Nathan. Uh, lovely right. episode cool. here. And, uh, Merry Christmas to everybody. Have a safe and happy holiday. Uh, and, and don't forget, we are so fortunate to live in this country and so blessed and pray for the people in Kentucky. And, um, and if there's everything I can do for you in San Antonio, please don't hesitate. Yes. Thank you for the blessings, Dayton. Bye. Take care. Merry Christmas. Thank you.